A college entrance exam company determined that a score of 23 on the mathematics portion of the exam suggests that a student is ready for college level mathematics. To achieve this goal, the company recommends that students take a core curriculum of math courses in high school. Suppose a random sample of 250 students who complete this core set of courses results in a mean math score of 23.6 on the college entrance exam with a standard deviation of 3.4. Do these results suggest that students who complete the core curriculum are ready for college level mathematics? That is, are they scoring above 23 on the math portion of the exam? Complete parts A through D below. Okay, so let's start out by writing out the null hypothesis. So we're talking about means. So we're looking at is the pop not the sample mean the population mean that's what we're trying to hypothesize that the not just the sample we know the sample mean is greater we're trying to see is there enough evidence that from the sample mean that the population mean is greater so the null is always that they're equal that it's equal to our 23 versus the null sorry the versus the alternative which is that the mean is greater than 23 Are they scoring above 23? Okay, verify the requirements to perform the, the test using the t-distribution are satisfied. Okay, so we need to have a sample larger than 30. If it's less than 30, then we would need to make sure it came from a normal, uh, roughly normal sample or roughly symmetric and unimodal. So it is larger than 30. All right, we have a total of 250. Test scores are independent of each other. That's what we're assuming. And they were randomly sampled. And it says, suppose a random sample. So they look good. Okay, use the p-value approach, and that's the only one we're really doing in here. We're testing the hypothesis. So let's go ahead and write the test statistic, and then we'll write the p-value. And we're gonna do this on the ti. Okay, so we're going to go to stat, test, and this is a t-test, looking at means. And we just have one sample, so it's the t-test. We don't have the raw data, so if you go over here to data, and you have a choice to put in a list of L1, I mean, we don't have a list of L1, so it's not that one. It is just, we have the summary statistics. So this mu sub naught, that's our hypothesized mean of 23. This will always be the same thing that's in the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. And then let's look at our sample. What was our sample mean? It was 23.6. So, you know, one argument would be that, you know, they, our sample did score bigger than 23. What do you want? Well, we need to show that somebody else's sample is say of the same from the same group is still going to be greater than 23 because we know there is variability within these samples. Maybe you just got a big, you got lucky and you got a high sample of students. Standard deviation, um, 3.4. And it said there was a sample of 250. So I've not done this one yet. My gut tells me it's not gonna be big enough, that it's gonna be greater than, it's gonna, it is a little bit bigger, but with a standard deviation of 3.4, I'm just thinking um, we're not going to be able that we're not that far apart. Could be tough because we have a big sample size. So let's change this to we need greater than. So it is, it is greater than. So go ahead and calculate, or you could click draw. Okay. So here is our test statistic. Ooh, t of 2.7958, and let's see how many places. Two places. So We'll say 2.80. Oh. So that's definitely going to be enough, right? We're almost three standard deviations away from the mean. So my gut was wrong on that one. So we have 0 0.003. We have three places. So 0 0.003. Be careful with rounding here. I can give you credit if you just miss one of these. But uh, if you just miss it by rounding, but let me know. So write a conclusion based on the test. So that's a pretty low p-value, right? So we are definitely going to reject the null hypothesis, that the fact that it's equal. Remember we said the null is equal. The likelihood of it being equal to 23, given that we got our that we got a 23.6 on our sample, 
given that it's 23, very unlikely. So we're going to embrace our alternative hypothesis and claim that there is enough evidence to conclude the population mean is greater than 23. Now, I didn't ask us to do this, but you kind of left your reader hanging, didn't you? So we're saying it's greater than 23. Well, what is it? So we can see it was 23.6, but let's run a comp and It doesn't ask for this. You're getting this for free. So we're going to go test. And this is a T interval, number 8. It keeps everything in there. Except it should be 250. Did I? Let me go back. And we can run a um, we can run a 95% confidence level or 90% since they had 0.1. So it's somewhere between 23.25 and 24 is where the true proportion, true mean is. Looks like I might have had a typo here. This may have actually said 251 when I put it in. Because when I rerun it with that, I get a slightly different t test, t um, test statistic, 2.79. Although it allows a little bit of tolerance here. I just want to make sure I clear up that error. P value is going to be the same at 0 0.003. So I got a little lucky there, right? Okay, let's see how to do this on StatCrunch. So we're going to go to tstat. We have one sample with summary. And just populate those fields. OK, so things are in a slightly different order. Just make sure you're keeping up. Sample mean was 23.6. Our sample standard deviation, 3.4. Sample size, 250. And then our hypothesized mean is at 23. And then we're going to change this to greater than. We're going to be greater than that. Press Compute. And we get the same thing that we did on the TI. Here are the two outputs side by side. Hopefully that's fitting on there. Okay, so everything lines up. So I hope that helps.